This video is for anyone who's considering their options between surgery and a non-surgical approach. Uh, in this video, it's a non-surgical approach, and this is about uh, one year in the life of my dog since her injury, and I hope you find it helpful and useful. On and off for a few months before the actual injury, I did notice that she was favoring the leg. Uh, at times limping a little bit, it would get a little better, and then I would notice it happening again. And then one day in early March 2016, she was running around the yard. I wasn't watching her, but I heard a sharp yelp, and she came running in, hobbling on three legs. And pretty much uh, this was what she was like for the next few days, not wanting to touch that foot to the ground hardly at all. The vet confirmed it was a full tear. They did that drawer test where they manipulate the joint and judging by the level of pain and also the fact that it was on and off leading up to this, that she was limping but getting better. The vet uh, was pretty sure that what was going on was it was a, maybe a, originally a partial tear that got a little better but never really healed and then eventually it just gave out and so complete tear. The vet prescribed some pain meds, uh, anti-inflammatory, and suggested rest, no, no long walks or anything strenuous, no running around, that type of thing. And I probably should mention the age. She's about nine or 10 when this happened. I wasn't exactly sure what uh, level to take the rest to. I wasn't aware, you know, whether that meant just, you know, no running around or whether what it was. So I kind of continued to do short walks uh, in, you know, on the street, but I live in a hilly area, and so that generally meant at some point we were going to have to climb a hill even if we went just short bathroom breaks. During this time, I noticed an audible popping or knocking noise that was coming from the joint, which I wasn't quite sure what to make of. Finally, about a month later, uh, I wasn't seeing any improvement. And then I found this website, I believe it's pronounced tiggerpaws.com. There is a wealth of information on this site all about this injury, and I found it to be instrumental in the recovery of my dog. I stopped taking her on the hilly streets for her bathroom breaks, and I instead switched it to just short leash strolls in the yard, um, just until she would pee or poop, and then I would bring her back inside, try to keep her in one room. Sometimes I would fence off that room if I had to leave because she would follow me, and uh, I even put a sign on the front door asking people not to ring or knock unless it was necessary. So that really helped a lot. I started sleeping downstairs as well so that uh, she wouldn't have to go up the stairs at night. So this was originally injury from early March. And now it's about the end of April that I started to notice uh, she would put a little weight on that bad leg. And just when walking, but uh, she would still hold it up in the air when she stood. But then shortly after that, she seemed to have some kind of setback in her recovery. I'm not sure what happened. It might have been that I wasn't home for a day and she did something, but she went back to hopping around on three legs. This is when I sort of made it up in my mind that I would take her to an orthopedic specialist to get another opinion. Just before her appointment was coming up for this specialist, it was about a maybe a week or so later, I did notice she did get a little bit better and was using that leg a little more, but I still decided to keep the appointment just to take her in. I kind of felt like I needed another opinion. The specialist manipulated her joint again, and I later read on tickerpaws.com that this is not a good thing to do when the dog is already under recovery, uh, and it definitely gave her a pretty major setback after that. He strongly pushed TPLO surgery, telling me that because she wasn't showing any improvement at this point, about 10 weeks, that she would not get better on her own. He demonstrated using a model of a dog's joint how the TPLO surgery is done, the reshaping of the joint. It seemed fairly invasive to me, so I opted to hold off just a little longer, and he ended up just sending me home with some more anti-inflammatories for the pain. The day that I took her into the specialist, she was actually starting to show a little bit of improvement again, but later that night and the next day, she was in really bad shape, which I attributed probably to the physical examination she had and the manipulation of the joint that he did during the drawer test. But the anti-inflammatory medicine kicked in very quickly, and about a week later, I thought she was putting much more weight on the leg. And then about two weeks later, 
soon after she finished her meds, I noticed she got really bad right away again. So my theory was that the anti-inflammatory pain meds masked the pain so well that she actually was overusing the injured leg. And even I thought that it was okay for her to increase her activity too. So assuming what we were dealing with was inflammation in the joint, I did some research on natural anti-inflammatory supplements and continued the conservative management routine. I found a lot of good information uh, in regards to fish oil having natural anti-inflammation properties and how to dose it properly for a dog. There's even some studies about that, uh, that it helps dogs with arthritis. So anyways, I, I wasn't sure if this would work or not. I also started her on liquid glucosamine. Then for the next few weeks, she was up and down with her progress. Then at about the end of June, she was really starting to show some improvement with the amount of weight that she would put on the leg when walking. However, when standing still, she still favored the injured leg, often just holding it up in the air. This is 16 weeks after injury, and you can see that when running, she definitely is holding that leg up. You'll see later on that she is improving with running. So as the weeks went by, the general pattern I picked up on was there was improvements followed by little setbacks where she would have a little pain for extra days, but then got a little better again. This went on and off, and then by September, she was consistently using her leg while walking. She was definitely stiff when she got up off the ground after sleeping. But usually after a few steps, this would loosen up and she would get better. By November, I decided to increase her activity so she could burn more calories because she had gotten overweight from the lack of exercise. There was gradual improvement as the weeks went by, and there was also minor setbacks where she seemed to be sore or limped, but nothing as severe as the earlier setbacks. These usually happened because she ran around too excited often, or I wasn't home so I can't be sure. I know she liked to get up on the couch to look out the window, and maybe she would twist her leg too much when she jumped off. And you can see here as she goes to run that she still favors it and picks it up a little bit. So I can't really compare this to the surgery approach. I've never had any experience with that. Um, from what I understand, the, the primary surgery that they're doing today is called TPLO. And before that, the more common surgery was sort of like a suture that, that they would put to hold the knee stable to allow enough time for the dog to build up scar tissue. And this scar tissue is ultimately what stabilizes the joint. The only advice I would have is you don't have to rush into any type of surgery. Don't let a vet pressure you that you have to make a decision right there on the spot. You can at least give it a week, a couple of weeks, or longer. It depends on how well you're able to rest the dog. I do know that the surgery requires rehabilitation and severe activity restriction more or less the same as the restriction required if you're taking a non-surgical approach. The absolute key is activity restriction. Really rest the dog. It takes a long time, but you have options and it's very important to do research on this and that the dog can come back from it. And uh, I wish you the very best of luck if this happens to you. Reach out to me if you have any questions. Thanks.